So we've been slowly moving from like simple shapes like spheres and cylinders and blocks, right? To like a sphere, cylinder, block, still life, uh, to coffee cups, to like simple subjects. So I thought we would move us to an organic subject. Um, and flowers is a good one. Uh, and particularly lilies are really nice because they have a lot of structure to them that make them kind of a little bit less intimidating to draw than say um, a daisy, right? Daisies have like a million petals, sunflowers, lots and lots of petals, dahlias, very confused. But the, day, the, the lily has six, six petals. And so once we sketch it in, and, and then this bulb, which is kind of a very pretty thing. So then we sketch it in. So um, I'm gonna go first to black and white. Um, you'll notice that my orientation for this is going to be um, uh, vertical, uh, but you could do vertical or horizontal, whatever works for you. Come on here. And oh, yeah, let me send this across as a. Here's the black and white. And as we're starting to think about sketching it out, we're gonna focus our efforts on the flower. We're gonna ignore the leaves for now. We're gonna kind of focus our efforts on the flower. Oh, wait, it's up here. And the bud. So we're gonna start with something I like to call the envelope. I like to call it, lots of people like to call it the envelope, not just me. Um, here, I wanna really make sure you see it. Can anybody tell me why we would call this technique the envelope? What am I doing here? You're encapsulating it. Yeah, I'm actually like building a little space that we're gonna start out drawing in so that if I was to make an envelope, it would be in this shape for this image. Nothing would go outside the envelope, right? It would fit. So uh, let's see, one or two other things that will be helpful. Here's my, here we are. Okay, so here is that. So kind of from the top to the bottom, if I were to bisect this weird little dodecahedron, I'll find the halfway point. One, two, uh, so you can just watch me for a minute while I set up the structure for this. One, two, yes. And then across here, halfway point. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the vertical distance and I'm dividing that vertical distance into equal halfway points and then quarter points. Um, this is gonna help me kind of get my shape in the right size and the right like connection. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do on my canvas forgive me, this is just like an old canvas I gessoed over, you can still see a little bit of the drawing, is I'm going to give myself a vertical, right? Here's the top of my envelope and here's the bottom right here. Notice it's bigger than what's happening here. So it doesn't have to be the same size. It's, it's more about proportions. And then I'm gonna find the halfway point. So I'm kind of guessing. So you can see I'm sort of lightly marking where I think you can totally use a ruler if you want to, but I find that it's more helpful to kind of learn to assess sort of by eyeballing. So laying a little mark down and then I'm checking it here. See, I don't need a ruler to check that these are the same size. Uh, I think I don't have that quite in the right place. Let's see. Check it again here. So you'll notice that my thumb is here. My finger and my thumb are here at the bottom of the halfway point. This pencil is the top of the halfway point. If I go up here, oh yeah, that's totally not the halfway. I'll bring it down a little bit. There we go. Uh, that's gonna be, oh, nope, that's just right. So you see how I did that? I'm checking by lining up my pencil and the bottom of my finger with my halfway point. And then I'm seeing if I move up, is it the same distance? This is the best way to kind of think. You could measure and find your halfway point, but it is much better to like 
kind of start to learn to assess things using your fingers like this, right? Are these the same size? And that means it's halfway. You don't have to deal with numbers. And then I'm just gonna split each half and half. I'm gonna do the same thing, yep. And then I just come up, this should be one, two, three, four, uh -uh, a little bit bigger. One, two, one, two, three, yeah, there we go. Four. So you see how I'm kind of checking and then double checking? Notice how many eraser marks I got here. I realized that like one of the values of you working with me is that I'm not going to practice this beforehand. So I'm not going to get it right and make it look perfect while you all struggle. I'm gonna struggle along with you. One of the things I realized recently is I'm so used to getting things and correcting them that I do it so fast, you don't even know maybe that I'm making a mistake. So I'm here to point out, here's my first mistake. Here's my second mistake. <laughs> See these like little lines here that weren't quite in the right place. Those are my mistakes which I just corrected, right? So rather than think I can get this right, I'm checking, I'm rechecking. And then once I get this across the halfway point, right? I know to draw a line across the halfway point and to know how wide it is, you can see I'm taking the measurement of the width by lining up my edge of the pencil here and my fingers at the base, the other side. And I can see that my width is just slightly higher than my height, wider than my height. So if I come to here and I kind of mark my pencil down like this, right? So I know that because my width is a little bit wider, taller than my height, I can come here Maybe we mark this. Let's see here. Now I'm going to check it. Did I get those in the right places? Mm, a little bit too high. I'll bring this in a little bit here. There's another mistake. Just pointing that out. I'm making mistakes. See, I'm so like used to the idea of mistakes is so normalized in my process. I don't even think about it anymore. It's just like, oh yeah, look, I've got to bring it a little bit. Okay, so this is the width. The next thing I'm going to check is it's not exactly, um, oops, it's not like divided in half, right? It's narrower on the left side than it is on the right. So I'm just kind of double checking. So look at that. Now I have this little grid that's going to help me kind of put this envelope in the right place. So I'm going to have you guys do that here. I'm aware I was talking fast. I was making mistakes. I was fixing them so fast. I'm going to take a picture and then I would like you to send me before you actually get your um, shape of, before you get this shape in, I'd like to see your bars just to see that they are correct. So that's what I would like to see. I'm going to get another piece of tape here. Yeah, it's funny, on Friday, we were painting an acrylic and we painted this. And at some point, kind of halfway through the process, Diana was like, I had my base all the way up here. I'd already painted all this in. Diana was like, your stems are too short. So I had to come back in and repaint out my stems. And I realized it was really helpful for people to see how you correct, right? It's easy when you're painting and drawing to kind of drift a little bit. Um, those drifts make a big difference, even if it's only like a millimeter, you can make a big difference to your correct shapes. So, just trying to position this correctly. Check that out again. That's good. That's about right. 
So I already have, I'm a big believer in parameters when it comes to drawing. I like to see where things are before I start sketching in. So go ahead and send it to me when you've got it, when you think you have it, and I'll check it just to make sure you have everything in the right places. Nice, thank you, Pat. Let's see, I'm gonna check this. Um, okay, so Pat, your width is not wide enough. Look at the width. At the halfway point, the width comes above the height. Measure your width. The width comes above. Yeah, the width has to be a little bit wider than it is tall. Okay. Check yours, your width comes up to about here. Your width is way too narrow. Check it. Okay, let's see. And looks good. Yeah, and yours is a little too wide. Uh, and I'm gonna suggest that you nip it in a little bit on this side, on the right, just a couple millimeters. But in general, that looks pretty good. Yeah, see, Pat, you did this. So yours looks like this. Right. See that? That's that width is not, it's the width should be the same as the height? No, higher. A higher little bit height. higher. A little bit higher. And did you say it was more on the left? Can you, I want you to look okay. at this shape. I want you to look at the shape. Stop and look at the shape. You tell me. It just more feels like a left. box to me. What? It just feels like a box to me. It's, it's not a box. Why aren't you using the, the one on the, the, uh, there's this, this, the long um, pedal on the left comes out farther than the pedal that goes up. The long pedal on the left comes up farther. The, the pedal that goes one? up, it, yeah, it intersects the other one. So. Yeah, I'm just doing this because this is the halfway point. It's easy place to find it. You're like, why am I not going to the widest place? Yeah, I thought you were trying to find as wide. No, as no, no, this is, the, this is the halfway point. I'm just finding the halfway point because the halfway point is an easy place to find. I'll get to this later. Okay. Uh, normally, I would go to the widest point, and we can. We can draw another line from the widest point. But Make right it even now, harder for me. <laughs> right. You need to get this width correct. So if you'll see, look again, you'll see this width, when I mark it with my finger and I line it up against my vertical distance, it actually is a little bit higher than the vertical distance. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and for you, if you're ready for this, let's see. Yeah. 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 There we go. Well done. Perfect. Yep. Looks good. Looks good. So. I'm going to demonstrate quickly. You can see that now kind of quarter by quarter, I can start to sketch this in. So I'm starting by sketching a little straight line, these pieces here and these pieces here. So this is like a little straight line that goes out from the, the middle. This is a little straight line that goes over. Then I connect them with a straight line like that. That's basically, it might come out a little bit more this way. This is basically how that works. Ah, the tape doesn't want to stay up. Got a little bit more tape up. And Anne, if you want to, since you're there, you can go ahead and try it. Uh, Pat, just send your stuff to me 
when we get let's get your grid right before we have you start building that yeah, out. I just Andy, said I'd like, okay, got it. Okay. Okay, the width is right. Now you want to scooch it a little bit this way. You want to what? Because you want to scooch it a little bit this way. Because this side is a little bit smaller than this side, right? It's not divided exactly in half evenly. Oh, okay. Yep. So just bring this a little bit, bring this a little bit over over to the, so erase a little bit. The way you do that is you erase the end here and you give yourself, so if you were here, right? right. Like this, you erase the end, you scoot it in a little bit this way and you take it the same distance out this way. Oh, but leave this, I was gonna move the center. Okay. Don't move the center, please. Hello, everybody. Hi, Diana, Hi. how are you doing? I'm good. I got delayed by work and then a friend of my, mine called me and there was an auction of the stuff that was left over of my artist friend that let, died last year. Oh, yeah. So, so I bid on some of his stuff through her because they wouldn't take my American card. Mm -hmm. and oh, I, okay. I just bought like a bunch of watercolors and sketches for his artwork. This wouldn't be Ed Asner, would it? Was he a painter? No, no, no. This His name was Herman Poglin. Oh, it was, okay. yeah, he's a fantastic artist. He, he's a, he was a ceramic artist. Oh, but he had a, I'm sure he had all the gear for all the yeah. things. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, all right. Um, very quickly, you can see across here, if I go straight across and line up here, you can see that like I can bring this straight across and kind of line up with the outside edge. And then I'm gonna come down past this line and in. Be right back. Yes. So this might have to be adjusted a little bit. So Pat, it is a good idea. I might've brought it out a little too far, far. So let me see if I can figure out. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it will have to be like, oh yeah, I brought it out way too far. Let's do this. Come on. Uh, observing, I've made a mistake here. I brought my pedal out too much farther way farther than it was supposed to. Maybe this guy also needs to come in a little bit. Yeah, that's about right. So you can see on both sides, these shapes kind of balloon out a little bit past the halfway point right at their widest parts. Then we come in. I'm gonna do a straight line like that. Angle down, angle up. <laughs> it's like a little coffin. Little weird sort of squashy shaped coffin. I really love this technique because it really helps me. And you'll notice the bud is contained in this unit. They are not separate because they kind of intersect with each other. 
I like this technique because if you can get this shape right, um, it makes getting all the inner shapes, the actual shapes that you want to draw easier. All right, let's see. And not bad at all. I'm gonna check a couple things, but I feel like you've got the gist. Yep, that looks pretty good. You could maybe bring this out just a squidge, but I think you'll be able to fit your pieces in there really nicely. And to kind of jump ahead just a teeny tiny touch, of course, what you're next gonna do is sketch in I'm ignoring the, um, you'll observe, I'm ignoring any inner lines and I'm ignoring the leads right now. You'll add those in later. But look at these nice negative shapes. Does anybody remember what the negative shape is? What is that? You know, negative space, Pat, what's the negative space? It's uh, the, the space that's left over after making two other shapes. It's, it's the space that's not the shape. Right. Right, yeah, that, good way to say it, just a little bit shorter. Um, and it's as important to get this shape right as it is to get this shape right, right? If you can't, if you don't have this shape right, then something's wrong here, right? So the negative space is very important. You can see that my quarter point is helpful as I draw this one in. I can kind of draw this triangle like this, and then this kind of comes over onto the edge like that. So there's like negative space number one, right? Negative space number two is here. Okay. All right, like that. So there's those two, you can start with those. And then I'll go back and show you again. I just wanna see it. Let's see. Two, that's pretty good. Uh, so Pat, you're, um, you're skipping, you did this. Oh, okay. I certainly you, did. And you also did this. So observe, I'm gonna mark them in yellow so you can really see them. Here's step one, step two, step three. Step one, step two, step three. See that? Yes. Mm -hmm. It extends out beyond the halfway point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Seeing sh this is everything in drawing. Getting to this place in drawing is the most important thing. If you cannot, you know, seeing these shapes is where you have to go before you can do anything else. Feels tedious at first, and then later you'll be like, how does anyone draw any other way? Um, yeah, Diana, I mean, I think he needs more um, grays on him. Uh, definitely a lighter background. Let's see, Andy. Yes. Uh, just looking at this one. Uh, so Andy, problem number one, this is not the halfway point. As at least what I can see. This looks like you've gone one, two, three, wait. Yeah. So you don't have this at the halfway point. 
you want to erase this line. You want to remeasure your halfway point. This is up higher than halfway. You've got it up to about here. Yeah, I have so one line the, I didn't erase. I was using the lower line. Yep. Uh, even so. Okay. It's still, well, uh, it's closer. You need to come down just a touch more. I'd say a millimeter more, believe it or not, will make a difference. And then I think it should be, I'm gonna check one more thing. Yeah, everything else looks fine. Just bring this down just a touch. You'll see it's gonna give you a little bit more room in this quadrant, particularly, to sketch out your release. Looks good. It's not as far off as I thought. Yeah, and there you go. So keep going, right? So this kind of, uh, you go like this. It's It feels like such an ass backwards way to draw, doesn't it? It's like, oh my God, what a weird way to kind of back into my drawing. But it works. I'm kind of ignoring that leaf here. This is a little bit complicated here because we have two things going. We've got this petal, and then we're doing a little bit of the outside of the bulb. So this one is a little bit more complicated, but it does, it does bear out. That's kind of the shape. It looks just absurd. Anyway, don't worry if it looks weird. It's still wrong, isn't it? Uh, not that much. You're a little far out. Bring these in. So you've got done this. Mm -hmm. Bring it in a little bit. Bring it in. Okay. It's better than it was. I feel like you're having to plug back into your drawing brain, Pat. So give yourself the time to make sure. Look at how much space I need, by the way, here to get all these different shapes in. Doesn't it look weird right now? It just looks so weird. It's very weird. This thing looks like Casper the ghost. Yeah, I'm gonna spin this in a little bit. Yep, there we go, that looks a lot better. See, I'm making mistakes too along the way. I know this is thick, but it's easy. See how I'm kind of able to thin and thick things out. So here, I made a mistake. I made this petal too large. Even while working with my negative spaces, I had to make this space bigger. But notice how much easier it is to correct. It's also kind of weird because you're not drawing in any It'll look better as I get in my inner lines. Here, I'm gonna send a picture over. So yeah, Pat, now you can start getting in your negative spaces. Okay. I'm sending them over so you guys can see them. Look at all my mistakes, lots of mistakes. And then, you know, what's nice about this and what I really like about this at this stage. So this is what we would say where the drawing is really very awkward, right? And none of these are the same shape, right? We think, we like to think that these petals are all sort of similar shapes, but they really aren't because it just depends on how close they are to us, how far away. So when you see it without filling in any of the inner lines, you can see how different 
the shapes of all the petals are, right? You can see how different that is, how different it is from place to place, which I always think is interesting. I'm always kind of fascinated myself with how different things are on the paper than I think they are. I really love this process. Keep things clear. I'll use a different color for the inner lines. You'll see it's much easier to get the inner shapes of things. I wish I could come up with a pencil that was easier to erase. Maybe you just need a better eraser. Maybe. We got about eight of them here. <laughs> yeah. So those of you who, if you've managed to get this far, you can see that these blue lines Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think this seems a little bit skinny, Anne. So if you can widen this. Um, so you've done this. See that? So if you can widen this out a little bit, really look at this negative space here. Look at that shape in here. It's very skinny. here. That should help you kind of widen this out to be the length that it needs to be. Uh, this is a little too wide. So if you'll notice, this comes in here. Everything comes in on this side of the halfway point. We're ignoring this green thing here. So this petal comes, I'm going to do it in blue so you can really see it. Here's the center line right and the petal comes in like that oh yeah you just didn't add this part you just you just you stopped here you want to like kind of ignore that um you want to ignore that leaf we'll add it in later like that there we go that's it but see fairly easily fixed then i can come in here and get some of the blue lines. So I can see that down here is this petal and out here is this petal. And I can come up here right to get my bud here. Last petal is there. Really look at the shape, Pat. It's here and out. You're going okay. out like this. Oh, right. Okay. Plug in. Plug in. Plug in. This one doesn't look, this is too pointy. They're almost all, so you have this thing happening where all your petals are pointy. <laughs> They're not really pointy. There's this whole kind of <laughs> flat right space brain. right That's there. Me. Your left brain. <laughs> You're, what is, yeah, what is this thing happening here? <laughs> <laughs> Plug in. Plug in and really observe the spaces. Observe the actual shapes, not what you would like them to be. Right? Observe what they actually are. Where they actually are. And I was so proud of myself. <laughs> That'll teach you. You're a little, you're a little bit uh, slow to kick in today on this front. So just let yourself get there, right? Sometimes if you're worried about something or anxious about something, it's harder to pay attention. But remember, the value of this is paying attention. 
the value is actually paying attention to what's here. There we go. Now it's starting to look a little bit more like a flower, right? Like this flower, I should say, in specific. By the way, Anne, if it makes you feel better, I also had this shape wrong, had to move on. Still kind of playing around with this guy up here. But it's easier with the grid than not this little map than not to have one, isn't it? It's way easier. Uh, Andy, not bad. Um, I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told Anne, which is that this shape here is very small. If you look at the space between the objects, it's much smaller. So really look at this negative space and you'll be able to shape this correctly. Oh, wow, that's exactly what I was fixing right now. Okay. Ah, so see, you know it. This is no, what's I... great about this process, right? It makes it easier to see, right, where things are. Like it just makes it easier. Um, it makes it more practical. There's this kind of little light area. It's because I've done so much scribbling. Let me see if I can get rid of these. Oh, maybe I'll do them in a different, I'll do them in pink so we can really see them. Yep. Yeah. Believe it or not, these little center things are just, I'm gonna send a picture over. It's a little hard to see. Um, in, the, in the black and white, but these little stamen-y things kind of, and here's the center line. So kind of to the right here is a mark. And then there's one of these, a shape like that. There's a shape like this, shape like that. <laughs> I have so many eraser marks, it's a little hard to tell. So we may go back to this later, but there's like six of these little stamen-y things. One, two, oh yeah, and then one out here. So if you can just get them kind of lightly. It's super hard to see mine. So it's one, two, three, four, five, one, six. I'm going to take picture of the um, color one because I think it'll be easier to see. You can see these shapes. So if you're struggling to see it in the black and white. Yeah, I keep going back to the color because it's easier to figure out. Uh, it, is it helping you though, really? It is, yes. Okay, all right, just check in. All right, go ahead and go back to the color. It can help. Sometimes it can help, sometimes it'll confuse things more. We'll, the proof, we'll see, we shall see. We will spend the first hour almost always drawing, at least, sometimes more. Getting your sketch in. The last thing, of course, that we'll do is get the dark 
medium and the light shapes kind of sketched in. Color, let's see. No, that's not gonna work. Okay. Can you see that each petal has kind of a light, a medium and a dark? Without getting too complex, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sketching them out for you. This is a little hard to see. There we go. Without getting into too much detail, I'm sketching in the light and the medium and the dark. I'm gonna send these over so you can see them. You can see that these marks are all the inside, lights, mediums, and darks. So the last thing you'll do, if you want to stop for a minute to watch, is to kind of sketch in, not too complexly. I know you feel like there's maybe a lot of variation. I'm not really interested in the variation. I'm more interested in the shifts. In the, the major, what? The shifts between Shift. light, medium, okay. and dark. So the major shifts. So you can see there's here, here, there's kind of a light here, then this dark here, up here, there's this real funky, and oh, it's a shadow, that's why, zigzaggy shape. This. There we go. That's about as, as much as you need to do. So here's where we want to get to. What's also nice about lilies is you don't have to get too much detail for it to look pretty good. Like you don't have to get into too much, uh, the, besides the structure, they've got this great structure. There we go. Diana, what are you still working on the little penguin? No, I think I'm abandoning it. I think abandon it until you're ready. You'll be ready. Uh, I'm I'm not happy with it. In yeah, it's um, and sometimes you get in stuck in a rut and you just can't see. It helps. I am pissed off because yesterday I totally wanted to finish a fern, and I thought I could, and I couldn't. I just couldn't. I'm like, all I need to do is tighten this, do this, and everything I did did not uh, finish the fern for me. I could not do it. By the way, for those of you who are observing, I'm kind of erasing the envelope. I'm going to. Uh... Yeah, sometimes you just need a little break from it because you just can't. And you're like, why? Why is this not working? I totally get Going it. Back to my garden. Yeah. Yay, that's great. Uh, I'm going to do, because 
all uh, all citrus trees are blooming right now. Oh, how wonderful. So I'm going to do citrus bloom. Do a citrus bloom and then maybe a, a far away shot of all of them. Can you get a bunch of them? Yeah. With I a little think... bit of your bougainvillea in there, that could be really nice too, kind of landscape. Yes, send you. Hi, Muka. Hi. I'm going to send you what I'm going to paint. Okay, send it over. Muka, hey, Muka, come on. One of these, maybe this one, maybe this one. Oh, that's wonderful. Is that lemon or orange? That's grapefruit. a lemon, isn't it? Grapefruit. Oh, get out. Oh, and look at there's the baby grapefruit in the middle, right? uh yeah i guess that's what that's what becomes grapefruit. the grapefruit oh that's i can smell it isn't that <laughs> cute smell oh my it. goodness i, I can didn't know smell that happened. it just looking at that i can smell it it looks so wonderful yeah. well that might make a cool watercolor diana maybe i'll have the um wednesday group try it all right yeah if you don't mind as well i don't mind because it's got some nice lights in it oh Actually, it, that could be maybe fun for us to do here too. We'll see. I see. Oh. I just thought I needed. I needed a break. The garden is always the garden. Yes, there's lots of inspiration there. Yeah, it is. I'm like I'm lucky to have my garden. Yes. Hey, Diana, what's the name of the area that you live in? It's called Chatsworth. Chatsworth. And is it south? It is in the San Fernando Valley. It's in the San Fernando Valley. Okay. Yeah. Chatsworth. Got it. It's the porn capital of the world. Oh, really? Oh, corn. <laughs> I thought you said something else. I thought you said porn. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, what? <laughs> But I guess I guess that industry is pretty dead now. But <laughs> yes, that's what it is. Porn capital, wow, the world. porn capital of the world. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hello, Luca. So let this take the time it takes. It can take an hour, it can take more. Uh, and if you want to, you can put some of the leaves in, but you don't have to, right? I could put maybe one or two leaves in like that. You don't have to put them in, but maybe a couple would be nice. You can see how easy it is to put the leaves in after, but it's more color mixing. So maybe not so many. I'm just gonna put in those three. Remember, you also have to mix and paint those. So you might wanna stop just right here. I'll be right back, you guys. Run. Hi guys. Hey. How are you? 
Oh, okay, sorry, I'm late. Uh, I went to try to find a vanity unit and it was a complete waste of time. You didn't find any? No, I went to Home Depot where they only had very few on show and none of the um, tops, you know, the, the, I thought I, at least I would be able to see the difference between marble and quartz. Yeah. And, and then there were a couple of shops nearby and they were both closed. Of course. So I'll go tomorrow again. And this time I went to Virginia, this time I'll go to Maryland. There's a big shopping area there. Oh, okay. There's a, and there's this Home Depot Design Center, and I think it's a bit more upmarket, so maybe they'll have a different sample. Yeah. So. And my car wouldn't start yesterday. Hi, Leah. Hi, Sandra. Hey, How are you doing? Quiet. I'm okay. I was apologizing for being late. I was. Oh. I went on an expedition to Home Depot. Oh, an expedition. <laughs> yes, it felt like that. <laughs> yes, I tried to go yesterday and my car wouldn't start because it's very cold and I guess I don't use the right. car enough of a battery, even though it's almost new, it's run down. So I bought um, a trickle charger and charged it overnight. Right. And it... yes. So, Andy, I think you'll see here, this is looking pretty good, and the sort of tweaking corrections you need to make are here. So what I can see is this pedal needs to come down almost like this. Here. Too many, not enough. There's this shape, right, for that pedal. Right now, your pedal is looking a little bit like it's up here. So you want to bring it down, bring it in, and that will help shape these two pedals. Otherwise, it's looking pretty good. Excellent. Sorry, I sometimes just go straight to the thing that's wrong and I don't say anything about the things that are right. The other pedals look great. <laughs> Remember. No, it's yeah. only the ones that don't work. It's I know, it's efficient. You know, it's just efficiency. It's like, oh, just go right to the problem. <laughs> It's so funny how I thought that little penguin would make me happy instead it just made it pissed it. you off. <laughs> Are you still working on it, Diana? Huh? She stopped. Are you still working on it? No. She stopped. It's bothering her. She Is it uh, does it need it. some shadows? Maybe I don't know whether it does shadows. No, I just think she needs to like leave it alone for a while. Um, you know, Diana, the truth is what's really inspiring you right now is your garden. So stick with what's inspiring you. Then the little guy will come when he's ready. Well, I think I did this too small though on my canvas. I might have to make it bigger. I just sketched it out and I think I should need to enlarge it a little bit. Will you? Oh, let's see. Yeah, well. I can really just smell it. Yeah, make it bigger. It takes up more space. Yeah. yeah. Connect it more to the other flowers that are around yeah. it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working on black gesso, I see. Yep. It looks nice. So it's so nice. Black is such a beautiful color. It just it supports all the other colors so well. It, it's nice when you work with light colors on top of it. It's yeah. I like it with everything. These days I do everything that way. It starts dark and red and, and layers lighter. Yeah.
So Sandra, I spent some time on an art auction this morning. Oh, wow. Did you buy anything? Yeah, I bought like two collections. So a, a total of probably 14, 14 unframed pieces. Because nice. you have so much room on the wall to fill. I have no <laughs> room. I have yes. no room whatsoever. Hey, exactly. Pat, this looks really great, except for this petal, which is too skinny. So observe, you have it like this. Right? It's really out here. It gets thicker here and kind of narrower at the top. Okay. Other things, but you got there. You got there. Really, that bud? That bud's yes. been driving me insane. See, it's because you're thinking about it as what it is. Try to just get the shapes. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> what am I always going to say? Just look at the shapes. <laughs> Yesterday in the drawing class, It was fascinating to see everybody's anxieties come up. And it was all, wasn't around the same things, but it was all around specific things that bothered them <laughs> about whatever they were painting or drawing. I'm bothered by that. I'm bothered by this. It was the thing. It wasn't actually, and because they were bothered, they just couldn't see the shape. It's not kind of fascinating. Uh, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to start pulling colors. Let's Right. Possible a variation of the same colors we used last week will apply this week. I've got anything new. I've got so much pencil on here, it's kind of hard to see where I put the dark shapes. <laughs> I may have to just go by the photo or go by the colored photo as I do that. Okay. This has a pretty good description of values that I think will be easier to see than the color. The black and white, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a little okay. bit, I pushed them out a little bit more. I found on my phone, since these, these end up photos on my iPhone, I just pull those up separately so that I can just bounce over to one instead of having to scroll all the way up to find one. The black and white and the color. You did what? 
Well, I was trying, whenever I try to find the, the original photo, yeah. I would have to scroll back up for 20 or 30 photos. And finally, I just went to my photos, opened the photo itself, and then left it over there, and then came back to WhatsApp to do the rest of it. So that when I want to pull up the photo, all I have to do is, is flip up and, and it's right there. Oh, that's clever. I'm so clever. You're clever. <laughs> we figure these things out as we go along. It only took me three years. <laughs> <laughs> I understand completely. <laughs> I'm, I'm working with two iPads and one cell phone. <laughs> and, oh, wow. <laughs> so am I, actually. And, and a computer. printed picture. <laughs> I'm working well, with a Surface I Pro, print, a print, tablet, print and a cell phone. Oh, I recommend we not really worry about the leaves until we've got into painting the flower. So I wouldn't even put leaves in right now. I would just really focus on the petals and the bud here. Once we've worked on that for a while, you can kind of make a decision. I will take you, of course, to color mixing, but it's a whole other set of, it's a different set of colors. So. What colors are you going to use? That's a good question. What do you think? Fuchsia. Fuchsia. <laughs> There's no fuchsia. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with, is this warm or cool? Oh, I hate that question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that warm or cool? Cool. Yes, oh, you're wow. better at it. <laughs> so um, what are some cool reds we could start with? I know some of you are like, but you know, if you're there, we might as well talk about it. Um, so number one, we're gonna need to do an underpainting uh, and uh, let's see. Queen. Oh, Abby, great, looks wonderful, great. You guys, we're ready to rock and roll. That's Andy. I think Anne was like nearly there anyway. So don't worry so much about these extra things. We'll focus on the flower first, then we'll add the leaves as we want to, as we have time to, if that makes sense. Um, what's nice about this flower is it kind of works with or without. Okay, yep, looks good, looks good, looks good. It's good, Pat. And oh, beautiful. And <laughs> that is a beautiful. You ought to try drawing this in pencil and next, just for the extra practice. This is beautiful. I think this will look like a gorgeous, this is making a gorgeous pencil drawing. But of course, we're not going to pencil draw it. We're going to paint it. So um, let's talk about color. Let's start by talking. What, so, one of the things I want to show you guys, and I want you to really see, is that one of the reasons I show you this in black and white is that it's really easy to see the light, the medium, and the dark in this form. When I put it into this form, I want you to look at it. Do you see how more distracting it gets to see the light, the medium, and the dark? You just start thinking pink, and you don't really see the variations that are actually happening. 
I think it becomes harder. Uh, can anybody see that as I'm like putting these two together, sort of what's happening, which is why I like to have this black and white here to help me remember what those are. So I don't lose my value differentiation. Why? Because a good painting, a painting that um, feels three-dimensional is going to have pretty strong differentiation between light, medium, and dark areas. So you're gonna wanna push those more than you think you can see them from here. But now let's take a look at this. Um, we're going to need an underpainting color now and because she's working in the acrylic is in a position, I believe, to try whatever color she wants. You could totally do a green underpainting. Uh, those of us who are working in oil, I don't really feel have as much since we're working with wet colors and it's probably going to be a, a little wet. I'm going to suggest that we do a, I hate to be a broken record. What am I going to say, Pat? Burnt sienna. How do you know? <laughs> Burnt sienna, yes. Burnt sienna, or I, Andy, I know you have transparent red oxide. This is actually transparent red oxide, which is a little bit darker version of burnt sienna. But I'm going to suggest burnt sienna or transparent red oxide. Which would, which would be better? Transparent red oxide is gorgeous. It's a darker pigment. And then, of course, as usual, for those of us using oil, I'm going to take Gamsol, pour it into a jar for this first layer. Uh, after this first layer is applied, I'm only going to use the Gamsol to clean my brush. I'm only going to use it to clean the brush. I'm going to remove this right now, too, actually, because this will distract us from our values at this stage. Oh, okay. Awesome. Here, hold on. Okay, come here. We are. Um, so we're going to start. So, Anne, you could do what we're doing. You could take burnt sienna or transparent red oxide and water to make a watery first layer. Or you could try like a green values painting because the pinks will look very nice on top of the green. What about the green? The leaves? If we had all the time in the world, Pat, I would say yes in oil, but we don't. Yeah, no, I mean, I, the leaves are in green background. We're not dealing with the leaves right now. Ah. Oh, oh, no, oh, we're not dealing with the leaves right now. We're really just literally dealing with, we'll decide later whether we wanna put the leaves. So you can see I've got a pretty thick brush and I've got a very watery layer. If you look up close here, you'll see there's no real paint. There's just kind of watery paint, which I'm doing by getting a little Gamsol on my brush. And as usual, I'm going to come in and it's even watery enough that it's kind of dripping a little bit. As usual, I don't really care about that. If you guys care, you'll want to be a little bit more careful. And what I'm doing is I'm literally going around and doing the darkest areas. So I'm ignoring the lights and the mediums right now. There is this kind of, and I'm getting just the darkest areas. I love this color. I mean, I just think this color is gorgeous. That's also why I tend to go to it a lot. Notice I'm only doing the green. If I've got, I do have one or two. So, Anne, if you wanted to, you can use this color or you can, um, I've got one or two leaves here. I can do them in red as well. Or you can try maybe a green and do the same thing with green in acrylic. So you see how I'm kind of going around the areas that aren't that aren't dark. I have a couple leaves. <laughs> it just looks like the steadily dissolving painting. I'm ignoring the things that aren't the darkest fours or fives on a scale of one to five. Let's get a picture of this. Um, 
And I'm doing this in Gamsol. So the reason I'm starting this in Gamsol is that actually if I'm working in oil, my painting is gonna dry faster. So I can let, it should dry fairly quickly. Um, normally oil takes like several days to dry, uh, depending on the weather, more or less. Um, acrylic takes 10 minutes to dry, right? Sometimes more or less, just depending on what. So acrylic, I don't have to really worry about my bottom layers mixing with my top, but there's a little bit of concern about that in this painting, which is why if I had all the time in the world, I totally paint it. Um, I totally paint it with a green underpainting and then put pinks on top, which I think would look really great. But because I don't have the kind of time to wait for it to completely dry. And in fact, I'm realizing now I, I would like to get a little bit of uh, paper towel. Like that. That's really helpful for, for me painting at home. What you just said. Thank you. What's that? that um, sometimes you can just leave something and let it dry if you like the color better. Maybe yeah, think about yeah, that. yeah, yeah, totally. So like just do, maybe have three going at the same time. You can do three underpainings. By the time you're done with the first one, I something else will be dry. I'll be right back. I need to grab a, um, I need to grab a little bit of uh, paper towel. What are you painting, Sandra? I'm going to paint uh, the king penguin with his baby. Oh, he yeah, hasn't got much white. After I see right. the trouble you got into with the white. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was my own doing for thinking like I was. I don't know, but. Uh... I figured you have more experience than me, so if you get in trouble, you won't. But also, I did, you know, with watercolor, just you know, the white. So I this have... guy, there's only one white belly. Okay, I have uh, my underpainting now. What are you doing, Diana? I'm doing. Um, uh, grapefruit blossom. The grapefruit blossom from your garden. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's lovely. That's my underpainting. Let's see. I sent it across. Oh. I almost never look at the thread when I'm working. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna look I hold it up for you. Here it is. Oh, nice. Wow. Does it smell beautiful? Oh, yeah. It looks like a primaria. Oh, it's grapefruit blossom. Oh, I love the smell of camellia. I have camellia too. This is, do you know camellia? I saw it in Hawaii. I never smelled anything like it. It's like heavenly. Oh, camellia, no. I thought you said camellia. Um, no. Camellia is tree. And it's got a flower a bit like that. And it's, oh, it smells delicious. In sunshine. A little dog pop, popped up her head here. Hey, you're not so little. You're a big dog. Yeah. You're a big dog. Oh yeah, that's looking great, Diana. Diana's doing a little bit of this reverse idea. And you can see here, I'm kind of wiping off in the areas where it dripped, where it's a little bit lighter. That looks great. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I want paint everywhere, but I want a kind of values map to remain. So when I go in and I do my lighter values, I'm gonna use even more liquid. So I'm lighter. So, and for you, this will be water, right? So that I create a kind of lighter, I cover up everything else 
with this kind of lighter color. I want there to be some remnant. And, and in truth, I also am gonna go around the background with a little bit of color. But I would like to show kind of my lights and darks. I'm not getting too into the detail yet, but I want to remember where they are. Then we'll get into color mixing. So you can see light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. Ah, uh, lost a little bit of my light here. I'll just wipe it off. So with oil light, I can wipe things off. The problem is, well, we will discuss that later. This is slightly darker. I don't have to get every variation. I just have to kind of get the major ones. Um, Diana's done sort of the reverse, right? Yeah, She's doing the reverse. Um, I mean, she is using complementary colors. She's gonna, she's done a kind of slightly tinted light and then she's gonna layer lighter and darker lights on top of it. Yes. And I also realized I have to go. I just realized that my stepson is in Los Angeles to play at the venue and I said I would meet him for lunch. He's normally in Sweden and I haven't seen him for a couple of years. So. Oh, wow. So you need to leave us is what you're saying. How come your stepson is in Sweden? Huh? How come your stepson is in Sweden? Oh, he, he's the son of my ex-husband in Sweden. Oh, I didn't uh -huh. know you had a husband. Yeah. I know we learn more all the time, right? right <laughs> I, 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 I shouldn't say this, but I have three ex husbands. And, and, a, and a current husband. Yes. He's yes. a fourth. Wow. Diana. You're the man. 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 So, Diana, do you have a three or Swedish? No, uh, two were Swedish and one was English. Oh, wow. And this That's one awesome. is American. That's fascinating. Well, well, well. <laughs> I guess, oh, I'm glad that I'm telling this on the recording. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> It's okay. You have to go way far in. Yeah. And Diana, how many stepchildren have you got? <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two. Have the other is a French daughter? No, they're both they're both sons of the same guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, brothers. Yeah, they're brothers. And you knew them when they were little. Yeah. Ah. So you're kind of like their mom. No, they have their they have their mom. She's alive. You're their step. You're their you're their stepmom then. Yes. Yeah, you have um, that role. But I the lived, nice stepmom, not the evil one. I I lived with them for eight years. From what age to what age for them? For not for them, not for you. Uh, I'd say the youngest was probably or maybe ten to eight. 10 to 18 or 9 to 17, something like that. And the other one? Uh, he he was two years older. Uh, two, no, I see. Yeah. So and 11 so, to 20. And, and now he's he's like a, he's a rock star now. So, but heavy metal, so it's no music. I'm, you know. Uh, so which one are you going to see? He was playing Portland a couple of weeks ago, and they were on tour in, in the U.S. Pat, can you scrub off just a little bit down here? We want to see photos. Bye-bye. Up here. Bye, Diana. Have a great Bye. Uh, Have a great visit. We'll see you soon. Okay. <laughs> there and down here, because we want a little bit more. I mean, it's not going to kill it, but it would be nice to have a little bit of understanding of the variation. Also, your burnt sienna looks very brown. It's not. It's a. 
transparent red oxide. Really? Look mm -hmm. at mine. Mine is orange. Almost orange. Um, my picture didn't come across the way it looks. Okay, got it. Yeah. So you're just taking it right. It's it's right. flattened. I mean, oh, yeah. this right here is beautiful. Yes, Andy. I'm sorry. I was just I was a couple steps behind. Are you yes. thinning this with a uh, Galkid light? Uh, no, with Gamsol. Thank you so much. Because the Gamsol will dry it fast. Should dry it very quick, fairly quickly within like it, 30, 20, 30 minutes. It um, dried it so quickly I couldn't wipe it off. Right. So um, so we use it only on the first layer, layer because you'll also notice how thinning out the paint. So Gamsol is really a paint thinner, which means that we don't want to use it on the top layers. We'll only use it to clean our brush. We're really probably, Andy, just going to use Gamsol and paint today, right? And on the upper levers, levels, just paint. I don't even think we'll use Galkid. We might, but we'll probably just use paint. We'll just mix. In fact, lately I'm not really using Galkid very much in my oils. I just sent you my lemons. Okay, let's see. I uh, just lost WhatsApp here. Oh, Pat, that's gorgeous. You like it? I love it. I love the background too. It's stunning. Bravo. Did you work on that this week? Yeah, this week and last, actually. Good. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Don't you guys think? Turned out really nice. I wish Diana could is the see. It. Is the blending okay, though? The blending's beautiful. Okay. Don't you think I'd tell you? I, I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> that means the blending is good. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. I like seeing how much you're working on things in between. I do uh, have your drawings when I'm when I'm down on, but I, I haven't got around to painting. The painting. And I'm hoping that you can kind of keep this little studio space you have set up kind of all the time. Can you? Yeah, I do. I, I do. It's always here. Oh, uh, that's just like my room. <laughs> well then I guess you can keep it set up. <laughs> you know, Diana sits on her bed in her bedroom and uh, Natalia, who's in Gdansk, Poland, also sits on the edge of her bed all the time <laughs> to do, her, or do all of her work. I was sitting here, but I found that it's nice to be on the ground. Like, yeah, I like it. That must feel, it's kind of like being a kid again, isn't it? Like in uh, kind of sprawling out and drawing on the ground. Yes, I totally, I think that's great. Diana is a dedicated room. Mm -hmm. No. It's a bedroom, though. I mean, there's a bed. It's a guest bedroom. It's a guest and bedroom. She's not on she's the bed. Sitting on, she's she's sitting on a couch. She's sitting on a little bench that's like with the bed right behind it. It's not like she's, it's not like, anyway, if, if you've seen the pictures of the studio. So, yeah, I've seen the bed and 
but I'm not seeing the whole thing, you know, because I'm usually looking at Diana. Yeah, yeah, you're looking at her. Uh, she's sitting on a little bench, and then right behind her is her bed. I think Natalia is doing the same thing. <laughs> a little bed. I'll be right back. Just send it on over when you guys think you have your underpaintings in and uh, then we will talk about. We'll talk about, um, we'll talk about mixing. Mm, yes, that's lovely, Anne. Beautiful. <laughs> look at, in a weird way, doesn't it sort of look kind of done? <laughs> like, you're kind of like, what do I really need to do? A really good underpainting will make you feel like the painting is 80% done. <laughs> you'll be like, you'll be able to step back and go, in its own way, it's kind of beautiful. Um, and that, that comes from paying attention to the lights and the darks. It's wonderful. Uh, take a quick break. Get up and stretch, Anne, while we wait for everybody else to kind of catch up with you. And, uh, and then I'll have you pick, and then we'll talk about the top colors. 
Take a break. Take a break. I realize I don't. Uh, anybody can take a break, of course. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm going to go grab some tea, actually, while you guys are finishing. Sandra, what are you working on? I'm uh, doing um, I'm doing this. It's an emperor penguin and a baby. Oh, <laughs> inspired by Diana, who's pissed off by. Well, no, friend. actually, I'm the one who gave us several pictures of penguin, including the one she did. Oh, really? And one was included in it, but I like this one because it doesn't have much white. Mm. And I love emperor penguins because they're so colorful. Yes. Well, because Can you know you send what us a color picture? Can we see what you're working? Can you send us a picture in progress? Oh, but I'm just throwing it now. So okay. Um, All right. I'm send almost it whatever nowhere. you feel like it. Okay. Penguins. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't attempt that white penguin in watercolor. Uh -huh. They have very long feet, I can tell you that. That's so cute. Your father is stepping on a stone. I'm not going to do the stone. It's hard enough to do the feet. It's very different from the type of penguin Diana was doing. Yes, that makes sense. It's probably just too not a, not um, enough variation. Yes, it's not enough contrast, right? Yeah, that it's tells you something, though, isn't it? You think you can kind of deal with it, and then contrast is important. You yeah. can push the contrast. You can make it more dramatic to help your painting. But if there isn't enough kind of naturally in the subject. It's difficult to know where to put it. It means that it looks flat and there's no shadows and yeah, yeah. it's a white penguin against right. white ice, a white snow. So. You have learned so you guys have learned so much. You talk Thanks about you. art. Like it's been a lot. I mean, you've got I mean it's a this is a really nuanced way of talking about a subject. I'm really, really impressed. It's sinking in everything you teach, Miss Lee. Right? It does over time. And not just like what I teach, right? You're teaching yourself as you're going through, right? Well, and you are I'm great... not teaching, but, but I'm also, even when I don't do the actual lesson, listen to No, everything. I hear you listening. No, you're abs that's why I'm like, wow, Sandra, that's awesome. <laughs> and I also, I often notice that you're stepping in with the less experienced people to explain what I'm trying to say. Have you noticed you've done that several times? Because you I, I try not to uh, answer no, a question when you ask I like it. give them a chance, but after that, they don't After that, it. you're like, yeah, you guys don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really, I'm fascinated to hear it. It's like so, um, it's like just levels above to be able to explain it. Right to explain what's going on. So it's so interesting. All right, let's see. Somebody sent me something. All right, Andy, you decided to go with pink as your underpainting. That was actually quinacridone red. Quinacridone red. Did you? So we're going to use that for our top layer. Oh. You may want to wipe it off a little bit and put something different underneath, like. A little bit orangier, or was that your second layer? 
That was my so, first layer. So, first layer. I mean, you're going to want to like, to be honest, you're going to want to have a different color under your base. So, because we're going to use quinacridone for the top layers. So, so my, just go over with a little bit of burnt sienna over the top of your quinacridone with a little uh, gamsol. Okay. I thought you were telling me to use a uh, quinacridone red. No, 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 no. That's for the top layers because right, like we'll want, we want so something. Did, so before, were you saying I should use yellow ochre? Was Because I did, I did buy nope. burnt sienna in the meantime. Nope. Just burnt sienna. Okay. That's all it is. Burnt sienna or transparent red oxide. I know you have uh, that, that was the other one. Okay, color. great. Thanks. So transparent red oxide. So just get some sort of bright orange in there over the top. You'll not, and use Gamsol. You will not regret it. You will not regret it. The pink is fine. It's just that like, you're going to put pink on top and it's going to look less interesting if your base is the same as your top layers. Mm -hmm. I think what we were talking about was whether we should try a green base, those of us using oil. And I kind of nixed it just because I like mine isn't quite dry yet. I know Pat's is dry, but mine isn't quite dry yet. So I want whatever we put on the base to be able to mix with what we've got and still look nice. And green will be a little bit uh, too complimentary. It'll make too much shadow but definitely pink is too close to our top layers. So we'll go with that on the next, we'll do that on the next layer. Yeah, Pat, really great blending on those lemons. You really got it. All that, all those years, <laughs> of like all those years of doing um, Spears has come in. <laughs> That's why he started to come into play. Um, in about five, in a couple minutes, I'm going to show you. You know what? Actually, I'm going to show you guys how to start mixing now. So Andy, if you want to stop what you're doing just to be able to watch, then we'll then we can kind of rewind and go back. So as Pat observed, this is a cooler red. There is a tiny bit of warm red in there, but in general, this is cooler reds. So there's a couple of cooler reds you might want to put on your palette. I have Alizar and Crimson, which almost looks like a burgundy. I'll take a picture of it in a second to show you. And then there is Quinacridone Red or Rose, which is really the classic color. So these are cool colors. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of cadmium, <laughs> but just look at the difference between these three. <laughs> it's just like, it's kind of absurd. Um, I'm going to take a picture of it so you can really see it. So the warm red is on the right. Cool red. Look at the difference between these three. This is kind of like a, a burgundy, right? And it might be helpful in some areas to have it. Um, and then the other color you're going to want is viridian green. Why? Why are we gonna want viridian green? Don't tell me for your leaves. Because we don't, right now we're not painting the leaves. Because it's the complement yes. and it'll create the gray. It'll create the shadow, right? The darker version. So just to give you, and then of course you'll want a little, you're gonna, you're gonna want some white. On your what about uh, Flynn magenta? Uh, you could try that, it's a little more purple. A little more purple. Oh, okay. You'll see. It's quite purple. I'm going to put this to focus. There we go. Come on, focus on my hand. Focus on my hand. Right. Oh, yeah, you're right. Getting fuzzy. Messed up. Maybe a little bit for the shadow. 
Yeah, and just sometimes it gets kind of, there's like several things on here now, right? So it doesn't really know what to focus on. Also, there we go, there we go. So I've got, if you wanna see, let's see, I'm gonna use a smaller brush, kind of a smaller flat brush. If I just put like, I'm gonna do it down here so you can really see. If I just put Alizar and Crimson down, which is a dark red, you know, it looks nice. But if I mix a little bit of green with my Alizar and Crimson, look at how much richer it looks. If I mix green with my quinacridone red, if I just put pink down, if I just put quinacridone red down, right, like this, it's okay. But if I put quinacridone red down with a little bit of green, look what that does to my dark. Kabam. Right? So this is this is color on the left is color without the complement mixed in. On the right is the colors with the complement mixed in. It just gives it that much more depth. Um, and remember, depth is what we what we need. Depth is what we need. I'm gonna take this picture. So remember, the stuff on the left is just basic color. The stuff on the right is a color is a red, one of my cool reds with green. Oh yeah, Andy, that's gonna look really awesome now. That's gonna be a great, that's gonna be a great values painting. Okay, so as usual, we're gonna start our painting using the, um, using the, uh, the darkest areas. <laughs> I'm really tempted to go back to this, right? I want you to return to this to see where they are. And even if some areas appear to have kind of lighter bits in them, I want you to really observe that these darkest colors are either gonna be, and um, by the way, at this point, I am just working with a brush and paint. I don't have any colors. Uh, and you can continue to dip your brush in water to clean it, but you're gonna wanna use less water. And you're gonna wanna use more paint. So oil painters, you're going to uh, only use your Gamsol for cleaning out your brush, which means that in between sessions, uh, if you're using the same brush for everything, you want to clean it off, you're going to dip it in your Gamsol like this, and then you're going to squeeze it out with your paper towel, right, so that you get all the paint off, and then you can mix. And my first mix is going to be either Alizar and Crimson or Quinn Red with um, green. And I'm going to come in here. And add that in. And add that in here. See how kind of gorgeous this is? It may even be too, you know, it's a little bit on the dark side, but I still think it's gonna be worth having this darker layer on here, there. Notice I'm really going towards the center where the petals are starting to lay over on top of each other and they're giving each other kind of shadows in places. Observe here. It's a little bit darker, right? Everything's a little bit darker. Here, everything is a little bit lighter. If you look really closely, you'll see here, down here, it's darker. So I'm gonna start by adding in that and then I'm gonna try adding a little bit of 
I'm gonna add just a touch of white to my chronocodone red so that it lightens a little bit. And I can make that a medium. Oh, yep, gonna need a little bit more. I might also need a touch of green in with my pink, I'm finding, because it's looking a little too pinkish on its own. And then see how I'm kind of blending in? Yep, more green. See how I'm kind of blending in this lighter pink and to the edges where my darks are. Now with oil, this is super easy. I can do a soft blend almost everywhere. And then of course I just add more white as I wanna get lighter. Now, if I feel like my pink is too pink, I can also add a tiny touch of red, cadmium red. I'm gonna try that to see if that helps me. Yeah, I like that actually. There's a slight bit of warm. Otherwise the pink tends to look too pepto bismol -y. as I get lighter, kind of towards the tip, see how I'm and notice how almost everything is a soft blend. I'm coming into lighter areas now, so I'm like adding in these light edges. This is mostly white, a little pink in it, a little white up here. Careful not to cut their bismolly. Yeah, it's a little bit better. See how I'm kind of blending in over the top. See how I'm mostly using just paint, I'm not using any medium. I'm not dipping my brush over here, it's super light. Hmm. I feel like I need to get a little darker in here. So I'm wiping off my brush with all the white. I'm going in a little bit darker with some pink and I'm brushing in over the top. So you see, I can kind of come in and darken. Yeah, there we go. Notice I don't have to have, I don't know, it's interesting. Like the question always becomes like, how much detail do I need, right? To get kind of the, it, the effect that I'm looking for. Oh, and by the way, definitely the centers here are like cadmium red and burnt sienna. I'm just debating over whether I wanna put them in first. Definitely it's red. It's a very warm, they're kind of dark.
there's this area here, which should be like burnt sienna and green. It's like super dark up here. More kind of red. And then around it is white. So I'm kind of working around. So as you get towards the center, it gets a little bit whiter. Low multi cuts. Yeah. I'd rather you escape in the morning if I ever got the whole day to find you. Otherwise, I won't sleep. Dude, don't do that to your mother. So oh, I put a camera pointed. They're impossible. They want to do what they want to do. Oops, I can see I, what happened here? Sorry, somehow I froze. No. Oops, I got booted off for a second. I didn't know that. So the really tricky thing here is I want to not lose my darks, right? My petal shapes. There we go. When you're working with oil, it's a little bit easier to lose your dark. You get a little bit of white in places, and then you can't get rid of it. You see how I'm kind of working around the edge here to create a less mushy. And this is not going to be as much of an issue for you because you can just wait till it dries and go right over the top. For those of us working in oil, the challenge will be and we may not be able to even do it in this session. We'll try, but we might have to wait. We may, we may have to stop on this painting halfway through, let it dry for a week and come back to it, which I'm totally happy to do. I'm totally happy to do it, so I can do that. There we go, it looks a little bit better. But we may not be able to get there the way somebody working in acrylic could because it might get just too much stuff. See how far you can get with this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop for a minute. So mine has a mushiness. I may not be able to contain. I told you, I never do these in advance. So sometimes I figure this out in the middle of it. Sometimes we actually figure this lesson. That's my fault. Kind of messy. We'll see how far we get. Mm -hmm. I know all of you oil painters have other things. 
you can work on and Anne can continue on and I can help her. Um, this, we've just run into the problem with oil versus acrylic. And you can tell it's actually, I am not, I have not been working in oil in a long time. I can feel it in this exercise because um, I know like if I was working in acrylic, I would just wait a couple minutes and then be able to paint over and go over the top. Um, but because I'm kind of like less familiar with oil these days, uh, my painting is a little bit mushier and it might take me another week to get it to where I need it to. I might need this layer to dry before I can add the top layers on. It's still in good shape, but it might take longer. We'll see. I'm gonna take a little break. I wanna see how far you guys get uh, and, uh, and I'm curious to see how it's going for you in acrylic where you can let things dry. Diana would totally be gloating right now. Like this is why she loves acrylic painting. And interestingly, I have not, um, I have only painted one oil painting in the last like four months. I'm kind of moving in the direction of very quick uh, working as well, which is just easier to do. Oh, I suppose did you ever finish that huge commission. I did. I finished every commission, all four. I'm saying pretty. They're already like the one who did the huge commission are already like. Um, we want you to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, but please give me just a little bit of a break. I need a little bit of a break, a tiny, tiny break. Um, I'm adding a little bit more white and popping in here to see if I can do a kind of very light pink tinge. I'm going to try to get the lightness of the um, bud in here. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, oil painters, I may have picked something that we can't do in one session, but that's okay. You live and you learn. Yeah, that's mm. okay. I see a little tiny bit of green, so I'm flecking in just a tiny bit of green in here. Yeah, I think it'll take a while before I can get the level of white. It's okay, but it's still a bit on the mushy side. Still a little mushy. Oof. There's only so. So don't worry about it, oil painters. If you can only get to a certain status, that's okay. I guess that means also we could try mixing a little bit of, we could take green, some of our green, mix just a tiny bit of red in it and a white, get a nice cool green. If you're using Viridian green, you should be able to get a nice cool green, at least a base onto your leaves. So that's Viridian green, a touch of alizarin crimson, and a touch of white. You can stick those in there. That actually looks kind of nice. So if you wanted to add more leaves in, you totally could. I'm just doing it with paint.
And what Did you mix there. anything in your Viridian green? Yep. I mix a little bit of red and a little bit of white. Okay. So same variation, just different levels of each thing. If you're having trouble, um, send it over. Or if you're just enjoying the process, just work. If you're feeling like it's a little bit messy, you can see mine's a little messy at this stage. Uh, I have a lot of white and pink on there. I just don't think we're gonna be able, oil painters are gonna be able to finish this this week. So if you can't quite get there, as long as you have something that looks, work till you get something like this, and then we'll have you guys, if there's any time left, I'll have you work on something. This will just be a two session painting. So funny, it would totally be a one session painting if we were working in acrylic. <laughs> You think you know things. <laughs> you realize whatever it is you know, you still don't really know enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go any further with this.
in five or 10 minutes, I'm gonna have you submit your, I'm gonna have you stop what you're doing and send your painting to me, whatever state it's in. I don't really care. I do care, but I wanna see wherever you're at. You know, if you were in my studio, I'd be hanging over you and watching what you're doing. <laughs> Lucky you, I'm not in your space, so I can only make you do that every once in a while.
Luca. Luca has come to say hello. Here, hold on. I'll share. Hi, Luca. Here she is. Hi, Luca. I miss you. Hello, Luca. Uh, Sandra, you don't know this because you've never been in my studio, but when I used to have students in my studio, Luca would always go to Pat's space and sit on her chair. <laughs> she was oh, standing wow. up working on the painting. It was She's so cute. Cat. And, and you you're hardly even like that much of a cat person. You're just kind I'm of allergic like, to cats. She's allergic no, to cats. Why. So Muka went right over, would sit there patiently and wait for Pat to pet her. <laughs> they often prefer people who don't like cats because they're not so invasive. You know, I don't dislike cats. They just don't make I'm, me feel I'm good. allergic to them. I start to see. Yeah, I know, but them. people like Although people Luca didn't don't go me. towards them. Yeah, they don't act so like over like whelmingly like blah. Yeah. yeah, they're not all over them like a goopy. Exactly. Look at her little face, Sandra. Look, look up. She's doing all. <laughs> I can't see your face. Oh, oh she's sweet. sweet. She's so sweet. She, she's like, hi, Sandra. <laughs> she just gave you the eye. <laughs> I should probably stop the painting at this stop. 